Yep. Hello and welcome to the Red Wagon Estate Planning and Elder Law Show, hosted by me, yours truly, Jeffrey Belomo. Thank you very much for joining me today on the podcast where we discuss all things estate planning and elder law and a few other things that I want to talk about. So, in the in a few other things that I want to talk about category, today we have a dear friend of mine, Danny Ferry. Welcome, Danny. How are you doing today? I'm doing extremely well, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Oh, man, I'm really excited about this. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, I was actually on uh, his podcast uh, earlier this week, and it just got released. So that was a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, do you want to tell the listeners about your podcast? Sure, yeah. We uh, started a podcast uh, probably about um, three, four months ago now. It's called The People You Should Know Podcast. And the point of it is uh, we, we just began to do a uh, – me and my co-hosts were doing a lot of networking and when we were in these networking meetings with people, uh, we would have these experiences where uh, somebody would walk into the room and somebody that we knew said, hey, you two need to know each other. And we just realized there was a lot of people that we needed to know and that we don't know. And there's a lot of people that like the audience, like the world needs to know about that they don't know about. And so our goal is to really just bring some uh, really great stories um, to the table. And then we talk about networking. We talk about how you can connect with other people. And we're really focused on helping, like, you know, startup businesses to take those first couple steps uh, towards networking and connecting with people that can really help them unlock their greatest potential. Oh, man, that's awesome. That is so cool. I got goosebumps when you were telling me that story. <laughs> Thanks. Very man. cool. So tell me a little bit about uh, your business and uh, what you do. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> when I'm not podcasting, which is my hobby and my fun thing. Uh, my full-time job is uh, I run a digital marketing agency called Empowered Creative. Um, we do three things specifically, Jeff. We do website design, we do uh, search engine optimization, and we have just recently moved very heavily into the vid video marketing uh, sphere of things. Um, the pandemic uh, really pushed video ahead yeah. By, by some years because of everybody being on Zoom, everybody doing things online, and uh, the social media platform TikTok uh, is challenging kind of some of the bigger companies, Facebook, even YouTube is having to make some changes to the way they do things. So, uh, yeah, we pushed into the digital marketing um, spheres, kind of the categories, what I'm calling it, and, uh -huh. uh, yeah, helping companies get their, get their presence online and become an authority in their specific category. Tell me, how, how'd you get into that line of work and, and doing what you're doing? Yeah, so um, in 2016, uh, I graduated from Pennsylvania College of Health Sciences, had an associate's degree in nuclear medicine. And, you know, you come out of, um, out of school and you're thinking to yourself, um, like, one day you hope to, you know, get to a specific hospital or work at a specific place that has prestige. So I thought one day I'll get there. Well, lo and behold, uh, my first job was that job. And so I got a, I got a job at Hershey Medical Center um, working nuclear medicine department. The problem for me, Jeff, is that, um, and, and this probably sounds awful, especially when you spend years of your life studying something, but kind of romanticized the job. Um, I, I got into the field because I wanted to help people. And there's a story behind that. Um, I'll share it with you real quick. So uh, when I was right out of high school, um, when I was right out of high school, um, the, my girlfriend at the time had a son, and uh, he ended up getting diagnosed with Ewing sarcoma, which is a pretty aggressive form of cancer. And we, we ended up walking through a season with him, and I was just extremely impacted uh, by the trips to the hospital, the way the nurses oh, treated him, chemotherapy. Um, uh, and lo and behold, like he really went through a process that really impacted me. Um, my girlfriend then at the time and I, we ended up breaking up, uh, down the road. And then when I met my, my now wife, um, she had a similar story where a cousin of hers oh. was diagnosed with the exact same cancer. Um, and so before I met her, her cousin had actually passed away and, um, and the young man that, um, had Ewing sarcoma that, you know, was my ex-girlfriend's son, he passed away too. So we just, oh. 
So, you know, yeah. have, kind of have that hole in your heart a little bit. But when I got went into it, I was, I studied, uh, or we were talking about like what type of field of work I would want to go into because we were like, hey, we want to start a family. Um, you know, like what line of work would be good for that? I was like, hey, I like computers. Hey, I like working with people. Hey, I have. I would really love to help people and patients and, you know, I, I realized how much they've helped people. And so I went into the line of work as nuclear medicine primarily is working with people with cancer. You're, you're imaging people that have, um, you know, cancer, you're doing PET scans, you're doing bone scans. Um, and you're just, and you're even doing some treatments. You're injecting some radioactive, um, tr- we could call it tracer radioactive isotopes into people that actually help with some of the metastatic bone cancers from like prostate cancer and stuff. Um, but the problem is I didn't get to spend enough time with people. Um, I quickly found out that I did not enjoy the hospital environment. I did not, uh, enjoy the bureaucracy. Um, and so it's probably a couple of years in, you know, I tried to give it a good, you know, the old college try, as we like to say, and yep. I realized I didn't like it. And so a friend of mine, um, co-host Dave from our, from the, from my podcast, people you should know podcast. Um, we were hanging out one, one night, uh, taking down some lighting from a church and I was just kind of like, you know, sharing like, Hey, I'm not really enjoying this. I'm not happy doing this. Um, and he was like, so if you couldn't do that, what would you do? And the things that I like doing are still the same, right? I like working with technology. I like helping people. Right. Um, but I actually want to be able to help help people. And so I was just saying, I was like, yeah, you know, I've always enjoyed designing websites. I've always enjoyed, um, you know, doing technological things. And so he actually said to me, well, I don't have a website that you can design. He goes, but I know somebody that needs help with a PDF form. If you can help them out, they'll pay you for it or whatever. So I ended up working on this PDF form. I got paid for it. And I was like, holy cow, somebody will pay me to do this stuff. Like crazy. Uh, And so Then I began to like really search and my friend actually helped me to find my first website client um, and had was asking some people and I did my first website and really it just snowballed from there. Um, Once I got that first website client, um, you know, I started kind of putting feelers out with people within my just like internal network and I was like, Hey, I'm doing this. Like it it was a side hustle. Like I was still working full time and soon enough, um, end of 2019, um, beginning of 2020, somewhere in there, it always gets a little fuzzy because of the pandemic. Just, right. Um, I actually like established an entity empowered creative, which is my company now. And I began to kind of say, Hey, I want to pursue like this to be my, my career and what I do. So the first thing that I offered was only website design, right? Mm -hmm. So it took me actually um, probably a year and a half to get to a point where I began to, where I got to a point where I I like laid it out in front of my wife and I was like, if I did this full time, like we would be okay. Like, you know, financially, everything would be okay. Right. So um, at the end of 20, uh, at the end of 2020, uh, September of September of 2020, I actually put in my resignation and everybody dude was saying, you're insane. You're quitting your, your very secure job in the middle of a pandemic. What's wrong with you? Um, and if they weren't saying it, they were thinking it with their looks and their eyes and you know what I mean? (laughs) Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And so that's kind of how the whole entity got established. It was really established out of, um, things that I'm passionate about, which we've talked about on my podcast. And wanting to be able to help business owners um, because specifically in York County, but I know, I know this to be true everywhere. I got, I have clients now in seven States. Um, There are a lot of great brick and mortar stores out there that just haven't really moved to the online space. And COVID pushed that pretty hard where people had to do that. Um, But there's still some companies out there. And so one of my great pleasures is helping really great companies take their space online and, and create that, that digital storefront for them. Oh man, that is awesome. That's awesome. I don't know if you know this about me, but uh, I opened my practice on my own February 16th of 2009. If you go back in history, you know, the phrase I always use is the economy is the worst since it was in 2008 and nine. And I go, 
I opened my own business. Like, what was I thinking? You know? Yeah. So, shocking. We share something else that's similar, right? You and I. So, uh, for those listeners out there, uh, uh, Danny and I are in a networking group together. Uh, it's called BNI, Business Networking International. And um, we we see each other on a weekly basis. But from the very first day I met him, I said, oh, that's a dude I got to get close to. That's <laughs> This is a guy I got to get near and, and spend time with uh, and get to know. So, from my perspective... Uh, he just exudes confidence, just welcomes you, brings you in, embraces you. Um, just one of the nicest human beings I've ever met. And a heck of a networker and a heck of a just a, a business guy. So, uh, Danny, tell me about uh, kind of your business philosophies, if you will, or your networking, or yeah. why do you get into networking, or just anything. <laughs> yeah, so when I first, when, so I quit, uh, I put my resignation in, and I was like, this is what I'm going to do full time. Um uh, by December of that year, I really began to recognize, like, I need to connect with other people. I need to net Like, all I knew was that I needed to network. And honestly, my my initial motivation was probably not as pure as it is now. Like, my initial thing was, I need to go to a networking group, and hopefully I can meet some people, and they'll want me to build them a website. Um, and so I joined BNI. At that time, everything was on Zoom still. Um, so we met online. It was really cool. You know, it was really cool how that worked. Um, and honestly, for like the first eight months or so, that's how we met. And it's nothing like it is today. Like being in the room together like we are now in person and getting to network. Um, so some of my networking philosophies uh, originally, like, you know, is me – uh, I believe in giver's gain. Uh, it's, it is my favorite thing. And I always say, um, for anybody who doesn't know me, I'm a person of faith. So I always say BNI stole the mantra of giver's gain from Jesus. Um, and uh, uh, he was the first one to, to basically just say, you know, just go serve people. Uh, no matter what happens, just Absolutely. serve them. Um, you'll, you'll be happier if you're serving other people. Um, you know, there's a verse in Proverbs that says, when one person gives freely, they gain even more. And so, um, you know, I love that mantra. Uh, I love, I love accountability. And that's another thing, you know, within our BNI group that is kind of a, uh, a, a value that I love. And it's, it's a networking value that I like. So, um, Jeff, this is even true for you and I, right? Like we both have accountability partners in the group. Uh, they're not, we're not, they're not each other, but one of the other things we're doing is like, we're talking to each other like, hey, how can we be more healthy? How can we hold account each, each other accountable to, like, go do things? And I love that because in, we live in a world that hates accountability. Yeah. So you look different, right? You look different when you're doing these things. And when you come to be a part of this networking group, if, the, if those things aren't instilled in you, they're going to be or you're probably not going to be a part of the group. So, um. The number one thing that I love about networking, and it's the reason we do our podcast, is I believe that it's through relationships that we unlock our greatest potential. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's because when you're rubbing shoulders with people, you're having conversations with people, um, you, you just – there's things about you that, you that you might see for the first time. We're kind of blind to our own self. Yep. So being able to meet with people, have those conversations, um, you know – I've had things that have happened in my business and I've went and talked to like other members of our group that have had businesses for way longer than me. That's super valuable. And, and another, like you can't do business alone. You know what I mean? Like if yeah. you're trying to do business alone, um, you're probably going to end up alone. <laughs> uh, yes. so, um, that's some of my networking principles. Um, they've definitely evolved and I've moved from, you know, originally when I joined uh, the networking group, it was about getting referrals and now I tell people all the time uh, that the benefit to me of being part of a networking group is way more than just the referrals. That's almost like secondary. I know it sounds weird. It's the relationships with people. It's the value I get in having conversations with people. Um, it's hearing new ideas, right, in those groups. It's um, hearing how somebody else walked through a similar season that I just walked through maybe like a year before me. So uh, I love that about being part of the group. 
and, uh, and and about networking in general, no matter who I meet, even if it's not in our networking group, it's just somebody I meet. I'm like, hey, tell me about how your business started. Like, like what's your goal? What's your passion behind it? So that's why I love networking. That's kind of some of my philosophies behind it. Yeah, I'm very similar in that I, I love to surround my people that around people, well, around me with people that are smarter than me, faster than me, better than me. And, uh, you know, my question I love to ask all the time is, so what was your biggest screw up? What's the one thing you wish you wouldn't have done? You know, people love to talk about uh, what they did right, but uh, I think I can grow more from what I learned, what you did wrong, or or the mistakes that you made. So that's always fun for me. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question that you asked me on your podcast. We'll yeah. kind of reverse the question. So, when you first met me, when I came back into the group uh, after having been gone for a couple of years, uh, was there anything about me that you saw, or or what was it that uh, kind of said, "Oh man, I want to get to know that guy." The uh, number one thing, uh, and I, I, I'm kind of putting myself back into the, the first day. Yeah. Um, you were so focused on helping the group and other people before you were worried about yourself. Yeah. And typically when you have people join these groups, um, it's kind of, it kind of makes me feel frustrated even as I'm talking about it with you right now. Cause I'm like, why would you approach it this way? But, you know, we all have to learn. We have to grow. But when you came, you were so focused on giving and helping first. Um, you weren't coming in there like, you know, thinking to yourself, oh, man, like, how's this going to affect the checkbook? Or even if you're not looking at your money, right, you're looking at how's this going to impact my time? Right. Because time is a valuable resource that, and like, you were just like, I want to help this chapter grow. I want to help these people grow. Um and honestly, it was a pretty amazing uh, thing to see because you can even have that mindset after you get to know people. Right. But just to come in there and just say, you know what, no matter what, like I might not know these people, they may not know me, but I just want to, I want to help and give. Like that was just exuded right off the bat. And I think that was amazing because like I said, when I came into the group, my motivations were not as pure, right? I was like, it's been part of my faith journey part of my growth as a business owner to get to that point. Um, but it was really cool to see somebody else come in and, and, and have walked through that journey already. And then when you came in, you're like, how, like, how can I serve you? How can I help you? How can we, how can we make this thing better? Uh, and I thought that was awesome. Like just from day one. When you mentioned earlier about, uh, kind of learning from someone who's just been there, just done that, or that was me. I mean, you know, we've talked about that since, but, I was uh, a vice president of another local chapter of another of another group that uh, we had like up to 70, 75 people in it. And I, I went into that group with the same intentions that you did. I think the same intentions that a lot of people do, but got to watch others, got to watch people far ahead of me. And um, there's a, a gentleman in my life, his name is Scott Sides, uh, who passed away uh, March of uh, 2020, right, right as the pen, literally the weekend that the everything got shut down. Mm -hmm. um, that was the first weekend of his funeral. And he was my biggest mentor uh, as far as, you know, in business and in networking. And that was him. I mean, he was a servant first and he just gave, gave, gave. And I said, I, that's who I want to be like. That's that's uh, someone I want to emulate. So when I came back into BNI, I was like, you know what? I know that if I can bring 20 new members into the group, and I can pass more referrals than anyone, and I can do more CEUs than anyone, and I can eventually something good will happen. And and if not, you know what? That's okay because I still got to help other people, and I'm a little further along maybe in my journey than, than some others in the group. And so I just hope one day once one person out there that says – that guy was my mentor, you know, hopefully I don't pass away, but if I do, <laughs> yeah, I know you know what, at least, at least somebody will say, man, I learned so much from that guy. And, and that's kind of, I don't know, that that's fun for me. And, uh, and I really do, man, I want to grow it and help everybody help all the newer businesses grow and have the experiences and the success that we have had and, uh, you know, give it back. So what's interesting about my podcast is most of our listeners are my clients. Right. So they, they only kind of see me and know me in the context of in the office, you know, doing their legal work, planning their estate, or maybe working with them on, you know, after a loved one has passed away. So I thought this would be cool to kind of 
show a different side of me maybe you yeah, know absolutely. They, they only ever see the legal technical jeff and probably uh at least in my opinion the better side of me or the you know the the more well-versed side of me is probably the business and networking side of me which they don't get to see at all so being on a podcast like this with you allows me to uh kind of have you share that so that's cool that is awesome so what would you tell a, a new business owner uh out there you know what would be something you would tell them to make sure of or or do this or don't do that Man, that's a really interesting question um i i like to do a lot of reflection um in our podcast we actually just did an episode you know we were only like six right before yours was released we did six episodes and we thought man we've learned a lot in six episodes right wow that's amazing so we did a podcast episode <clears throat> where we just talked about everything that we had learned to that point. I think the, I think it's very similar for a new business owner. Um, take time, uh, even right now, like put it on your calendar to take some moment of time to reflect. You're going to see things that you're doing really well and you're going to see things that you want to improve on. And the number one the number one most important thing is uh, whatever you're doing, be consistent. So these two are actually married to one another. So when you reflect and you look back and you say, okay, I've done this consistently well, continue to do that. When you see things that you've done consistently bad, you know you need to implement systems and processes to, to improve that. Um, in my business, when I started out, right, it was just me. I was just, I was doing everything, web design, everything. Um, I've now got to a point where I can't. So now I had to hire somebody. And in order to improve some things, I've had to put system and process, systems and processes in place. Sometimes that can be software related, like, hey, this piece of software helps me do everything I want to do in 50% of the time, right? Or it's legitimately you, you, you need to hire somebody because you need somebody to do this. Right. Um, but what it comes back to is reflecting on the things you're doing well, um, be sure to get some customer feedback. Uh, I tend to be extremely self-aware, which is a blessing and a curse. Yeah. There are times when I do things really well that I think I'm not doing well. And then people are like, Hey, you, you were doing that really well, but I'd rather be that person than doing things really bad and thinking I'm doing really good. So yeah. reflect, uh, you know, reflect, enjoy the things that are going well, uh, take your time, be consistent, right? Just be that constant. Uh, that is more important a lot of times than anything else, right? People hate change. I mean, they just do. Yeah. So being consistent keeps there from being a lot of change, and people will appreciate that. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that mine's always uh, just find what you're passionate about. You know, forget forget what other people want you to do. Forget what is normal. Forget what society wants. You know. Just find what you love and passionate about. And then my next bit of advice is when once you open up your own business, get a coach, yeah. get a mentor, get, get get someone. I mean, I know for me, had I not found a national organization that I belong to uh, that, that helped me with systems and processes, helped me with legal technical, and I ended up, I ended up coaching and teaching for them for about five and a half years, I don't know where I would be. And uh, I think I was aware enough to know that I didn't know. I think, yeah. but boy, once you join an organization and you go, well, I would have never thought of that when, so, and I'm not suggesting you have to join an organization, but get a coach, get a mentor, get someone who's been there, who's done that, who's maybe ahead in, in, in the journey that you're on. Um, which is why I love to coach lawyers who are starting out as a general rule. Most lawyers are not good business people. Yeah. So, you know, for me, it's just trying to push them out of their comfort zone and, and, uh, kind of get them to, to see things that maybe they wouldn't see otherwise. So that's fun. And that's the thing I always say is, you know, be passionate about what you're doing, forget what people want you to do, do what you want. And once you start it, get yourself a coach. So hopefully that yeah. helps someone out there. I love that you said that Jeff, because I think for me, one of the things that I evaluate a lot of times is like, is this still a burning passion, right? right. Or am I just doing this because I'm making money at it? Like when you, when you self reflect every so often, like, and you, you have to like self reflect and, and then ask yourself, like, is my motivation still pure or, you know, like, 
we talked about this in our podcast. Like, if you, you wanted to help people, right? So, is my motivation still pure, um, or did I start out here thinking I had a passion and I didn't? It's okay to say, you know, this really isn't the thing I'm passionate about. You know, yeah. and 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 you know, find a nice way to kind of land the plane and continue on your journey of finding what you're really passionate about. Um, for like, just to be honest, for me. Like I'm very, I was passionate about web design right. as I've moved along the journey. Like I've gotten more passionate about like being more of the CEO of my company than being the guy who does everything. Right. Um, and so I've had to like, as I've realized this about myself, I've had to make these like little adjustments, like, you know, hire a couple of website designers to now work for my company. Um, hire a virtual assistant to do social media because like what my passion is, is to, is to really be more of the CEO. Um, and then also like one of the things that I'm super interested in, which is why we're moving into the video space is how to help people market through video, um, online. And so that's part of, you know, going down the SEO, uh, route of things is video marketing is huge with, with right. the marriage between Google and YouTube, like not utilizing YouTube, not utilizing video, you are missing 50% of what you could get as a, you know, that's like a free nugget of information there for you. For those of you who don't know, you're missing out on like 50%. And so uh, you're missing out on 50% of the, of the effect that you could have uh, because like Google's big brother, YouTube's little brother, Big brother is going to take care of little brother. So if you're feeding little brother, you're going to be helping out your overall, um, you know, your overall goals. But for so many people, it's a very daunting task, right? It takes time. And so for us to be able to come in there, help them manage that. And then the other part is just like knowing what to do on YouTube to make it effective. So that's something I've become really passionate about. And, um, that's kind of why we've moved into that space a little bit um, because it's a passion, right? Um, it's like, oh, I'm really passionate about this. I, I really like working in this space and learning about this. Um, so, yeah, self-reflection is super important. It's going gonna, it's gonna to direct you. It's going to keep you on track, and it's going to help you make sure you're doing what you're passionate about. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's awesome advice, man. That is great. Well, uh, anything else uh, you want to tell the listeners or anything? Well, since this is your podcast, man, I just want to let them know uh, if you're working with Jeff um, oh. or even the team at Belomo and Associates, uh, you got an amazing team. Um, you got a guy that is um, top notch, and uh, he cares about you more than you than you may know. Um, you know, within the legal within within doing the legal things, there are just things that are kind of legalese or whatever, but. Jeff's heart is to care for you guys, um, to make sure that you're protected. And um, he doesn't only exude that in his business, but across the board. That's just who he is. So um, if you're working with him, you're in great hands. And uh, couldn't say more about him. Um, so thanks, Jeff. Thank you, man. How will the listeners find you if they're looking for you, uh, either your website or your podcast? Yeah, so uh, we'll just do podcast. Uh, hey, do you know dot com is a podcast. Um, you can go there. You can watch the old episodes. You can figure out what platform you want to watch us on. We're on all the socials, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Uh, PYSK pod is our handle for that. And if anybody's looking for any type of digital marketing help, uh, empoweredcreative.co, um, just go there uh, or, uh, you know, talk to Jeff. Say, hey, Jeff, I'm going to talk to that web design guy and uh, I'll, I'll make sure he gets the referral over to me. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. And just a reminder to uh, our listeners, uh, if you're looking for legal advice, please do not take legal advice from this show or any other radio show for that matter. If you're looking for something, go talk to a lawyer in the state that you are in who is licensed to assist you with the matter that you're looking for. And that way you can get legal advice. And uh, this radio show does not constitute attorney-client relationship in any way. It is for merely informational and educational purposes. So I hope you enjoyed us on the Red Wagon Estate Planning and Elder Law Show, hosted by me, yours truly, Jeffrey Malomo. We look forward to seeing you on the next show. Have a great day.